The Survivor Specialists are back, breaking down episode eight of Survivor 46. Unfortunately, we'll have to call out late, so I don't have a co-host for tonight. Phil is breaking this down alone, unfortunately, to all of you. You're just going to have to listen to my ears. Or am I alone? I am not Zane? alone. And hey! Yes, she is still alive. She is still <laughs> well. She is still a human being. Here is Alexa coming back for the first time this season since her her epic departure from the Survivor 45 finale. Um hope everybody's excited that you're here Alexa. <laughs> you just got you just landed the wildest episode of the season and I told you you were going to get the comments. No one's ever called me mother before, so this is huge. Hi everyone. I'm so happy to be back. Phil texted me a couple hours ago and he was like, "Hey, can you fill in?" I was like, "No problem." And then I can't believe this is the episode. I have sat on my opinions for two months and this is the episode that I have to get my opinions on. Get out of here. I I am so happy that you're having to jump in and do this coming cold off the bench, no time to warm up. And now you just have to sit here and say, okay, here's all my thoughts on the first seven episodes. And also you need to break down psychologically what the hell was going on with Q's brain because I've now had eight episodes of Q and I've given up on trying to figure out what's going on with this man's mind. So, Alexa, your first question <laughs> from me and the community wants it is, what in the world was Q just mumbling about at Tribal Council? What the hell was that? Respectfully, of course. But that that was insane. I, I'm with you. I was like, I get, I get his deal. I get where he's coming from. And this whole episode, his theme was, I want to be in control. And I think... Maybe that's what he was trying to do, but he's he's done this before. He's done the like vote me out before, and Kenzie and Tiff have rolled their eyes. I have no. We're not on a Patreon box. I have no freaking clue. I like that. I like that. that. Was cool. I have. What do you think? What have you guys been saying? I've been listening, obviously. Um, obviously, no way you weren't. <laughs> I also love. I mean, all the comments right now. The, the we probably have like three hundred comments already in the live. Oh chat. my god! Most of them were trying to break down Q's brain, and everybody's just saying your name over and over and over again. <laughs> so it's a good combination that we have going on here. What are your the, quick? Yeah, 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 keep going. No, go ahead. Which one you got? <laughs> what are your quick thoughts on the first eight episodes? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. We'll do bullet points in about five in about five minutes. Like, I'm gonna be honest. I don't know what Q is thinking at this point no. because if he wants <clears throat> Tiffany to go home, Tiffany, this is not on Tiff's radar. So I'm trying to understand the whole fall on the sword situation that he's going for here because it doesn't really make sense in my mind of what he was trying to say. Jeff at one point said, it's pretty clear what he's saying. And I wanted to be like, hold on. Either the editors all lost their minds or Jeff is just playing pretend with the cast because nothing he said was clear. I don't understand why he was going the route he was going. I think when Jeff said that he meant like, cause they were all like unwell at that. And I think, cause Q said something, he's like, I made a mistake that no one else needs to be the downstream impact of, but like, so maybe that's what he meant, but no one thinks that way because no one, he told, he told Tiff and Kenzie, he was like, you guys don't have the votes to get rid of Tevin. I don't think that was true. I think they did have the, they had the votes perfectly fine. So I think he felt bad, but I think Tevin was going home no matter what. That little powwow at the end with like that Venus crashed, that wasn't going the way he wanted it to go. No. Not at all. And I got to have J.D. Robinson in here. Phil, I owe you a public apology. J.D. was so convincing in the predictions and power rankings episode that I moved Tevin from five to three. So now I am losing Ooh. to Will in the predictions and power rankings. And it's J.D.'s fault. I don't care what anybody <laughs> says. So sorry, J.D., but you're not on. You're not in my good graces right now after all of that. Here's, here's what I got to say about Q. Q is clearly wanting and feeling the need to be in total control of this game. Mm -hmm. But it's almost like as soon as he falls out of it, his initial reaction is to pout and then threaten people with something that really is going to hurt them maybe in a little bit, but not going to hurt them ultimately. So like, for instance, 
He steps down. He's mad that nobody will quit for the rice. And then he throws his temper tantrum, essentially, when he gets back to camp. Of, we could have done this. He's complaining over on the bench. Then when it goes that the vote is not going to go the way he wants, and he goes and tells Hunter to do something. Now, Hunter acts. It's almost like he was trying to punish Hunter. Hunter, if you're going to not listen to me, I am going to blow this up and say, well, I just want to go home. But at the end of the day, everybody needs you to go home at some point anyway. Although right now, I think he's an easy person to beat at Final Three. But yeah. that's where it's weird to me. It almost feels like he's trying to like blackmail people when he doesn't have 110% control. Yeah, it could be like, if if I don't get it my way, no one gets it anyway. But Because I, I can't tell what he... It, it was it was it was frustrating because he was like, all right, I'm tapped out, and then people would like say things in him, and he just like wouldn't say. Oh, this is editing, but he was just like, oh, okay, like, and then he goes and tells Tiff, like, he is then an active. Yeah, it's frustrating that he's like, I'm out, vote me out, and then still chooses to be an active participant in in all the live tribal stuff. And I think like this was actually this will be huge for Tiff's game that she ended up finding out that she was a target. She was so, she would have been completely blindsided if she went home tonight. Now she like, she's got it. She's got everyone on her radar. So this was great for Tiff. Yeah. And I'll, I'll say that in a sec here. Jack Wolf threw in a, a nice little super chat. So I got to read that off. Hey, Phil, it's been almost 10 years since you and Will did the season winner player rankings and drafts. Can we get them redone this offseason? We're definitely planning to do some stuff this offseason. So hopefully that will come. But I mm. agree with you here on Alexa. Thank you for the thank you for the super chat there, Jack. Um, I agree with you, Alexa. This might be what ultimately puts Tiffany into the winning seat of Survivor 46. Yeah. Because she had no idea that there was a chance that she could potentially be voted out tonight. When mm -hmm. Charlie said Tiff's name, her reaction was more panicked than Jeff's when Hunter decided to take his arms off and hang upside down from the pole. <laughs> that was ridiculous. It was, it was brutal. <laughs> and she did not see it coming. And she's like, are you serious? And when Charlie, Charlie was able to gain Tiff's trust in this moment mm. and say, he told me that you have an idol. And there's no way Charlie would know that unless Q said it. And especially then Q goes and tells Kenzie and Ken's reaction, ooh, spicy. That it. is just perfect because there's no doubt in Tiff's mind it was Q who told Charlie this. Of so course. this might be, now it's in Tiffany's mind of, I'm not untouchable. It's mm -hmm. not that I am unstoppable in this game. I've been playing hard and I've been playing well and I have my idol, but people are still ready to vote me out when they find that it will be better for their game. And I honestly think this was a huge missed opportunity for this cast. I think Tevin was the wrong move pretty much across the board for everybody really? on the team, but we can talk about that later. I just want to hear what you think about whatever I said before that. I uh, Well, I think what, one thing that has stuck out to me throughout the first eight episodes is that Charlie really knows how to word things appropriately. I think if Charlie wins, that is what we will point back to. He everything he says is spoken perfectly. Um, maybe that's just how he is, or maybe he's really good at Survivor. It is probably both. Um, I agree with you. I, I feel like I've had Tiff in the, what did you call those? Th you would break people into threes. It was like, I would say contenders. faker. It was like fake contenders, pretenders, and. And no shot, but pretender no shot. is kind of like. It's a little mean. It's a hard one, but it's kind of like saying they look like they have a chance to win, but they don't really have a chance to win. I had her in, in like the pretenders, and now I would. Based on how she reacts to this, which I think she'll do well, I would put her higher up. Um, I think getting rid of Tevin was a good call. I was waiting for Venus to go home tonight, and I was not going to be happy about that. I was like, this is the kind of episode where they get rid of the common denominator, and it sucks. So I was – the, exactly. I was blown away, actually, that it then became unanimous because the six is – talk about pretenders. The six yeah. is a group of pretenders. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I thought Tevin was the right person to get rid of, but you don't you don't think that. No, well, the reason why I don't think Tevin was the right person to get rid of is because <laughs> Tevin was playing pretty obvious. All right, Alexa's first time forgetting that she shouldn't be drinking water too too harshly on the podcast. Should oh I my god, I've so, so much to do. <laughs> um, but I feel like Tevin was a little obvious in how he was playing the game. We had people calling him King Tevin. Venus was seeing through him. He's trying to take credit yeah. for moves. I think that 
you were going to have a good argument against Tevin at the end. And if Tevin tries to mix up the game, it was going to be pretty noticeable when it was going to happen. Tiffany yeah. with an idol in an alliance that has really been running the game. They're the ones who went to the most tribal councils pre-merge. The Yanu three have not had anybody go home since the tribes have fake merged slash merged. Mm -hmm. They are kind of running this game. And now it's three, three, three across the board. To me, Tiffany is the more dangerous player. She's better socially. She doesn't have people on this island who flat out hate her. Because I think with Tevin, Venus mm. and Liz just flat out do not like Tevin. So yeah. they were two people who were never going to vote for him to win. Whereas Tiffany, man, she is scary. Now, maybe, she, maybe she's not as scary if you don't know she has an idol. But then once they all found out she had an idol, this is the perfect time to blindside her. Yeah. And now I feel like that thing's going to happen where because Tiff's idol is public – she actually becomes less threatening, which is good because she's she can still point and say, "Look, you guys found out about my final final ten. I never had to play it when, when you know, really she gets to the end, or or and they're not going to want to vote her out anymore because it's not like a huge blind side." Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah, that's now, a good point about Tevin. Can they pull the blind side on Tiff uh, at the next tribal? Do you think, like, or at any tribal coming up, or do you think she's going to? start to figure out people are being weird with her. I think that would require Kenzie to want to vote her out. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't think, cause now Kenzie's on high alert. Cause she yeah. didn't know, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. I think with Tevin, um, I forget what I was trying to say. Yeah. That is a good point. I think I could never tell how uh, other than Venus, I could, it seemed like everyone was blinded by Tevin. So, yeah. But that I think it's because we've spent so much time looking at this group of six when like Ben was like, yeah, Liz was like, yeah, like everyone was all actually this was Liz's idea. Liz uh, like is one of the nine people who thought she deserved credit last week. This was her move. This was Liz's move. And is this the beginning of Liz's winter edit? When we had JD on, <laughs> I pointed out that through seven episodes, Liz and Erica <laughs> both had 11 confessional. I'm just saying. Wow. That is so <laughs> that sucks for yeah, Erica. Well, that, that's yeah, so that sucks. Is, that's the real <laughs> takeaway from that is that's just wow. why Alexa and I struggled through season 41 as much as we did. That's the real takeaway. Um, Liz ended up with three confessionals tonight. I got to check up on my um, nice. my girl's confessionals uh, for Erica when she was through eight episodes. Did she also get three? Are we being trolled by <laughs> the Survivor editors who definitely pay attention to this more than us? And now Erica only had one. So Liz currently has more confessionals oh, than Erica through eight episodes. That's so um, bad. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> if you're this far in, if you're still listening 13 minutes in, please like this video, subscribe to the channel. Alexa, this is a thing we do now. I know you weren't. Actually. Fun. You do it like halfway through or like partway yeah. through. We try to do it early on. And then I normally forget because we just get hot going. So Patrick, oh, Stahl, yeah. don't forget to like and subscribe. Don't forget to um, like and subscribe. So it actually really helps. It's getting a lot more subscribers. We're up over 10,500. So appreciate it. Nice. So, yeah. So now Alexa's here. Who doesn't like that? So like, like, like all the will stands. Take a seat. Um, there are will stands. They came up really, really fast. Um, mm. But we'll, we'll see. We'll see if they want to stick around don't. with Will after all is said and done. After they hear you again, they might. It's like they're all going to like have like the mask melt off. Oh my God. <laughs> that's right like in the lion king when the sun rises over pride rock and like exactly and you you're yeah. holding me up <laughs> yeah everything turns green again that's what's happening right here is everything is turning green again become um, a patron too yes become a patron we, we do that, that in the middle <laughs> we do well since that's showing the entire time we don't have to say oh true yeah that's that's right there i mean for all the audio listeners there it is but uh become a patron yes anyway Right. Let's talk about the beginning of this episode. Let's go to the beginning. Let's go to the start. They come back from tribal. Q's mad. Nobody will talk to Q. Q goes and sits on his stump and pouts. Why are Everybody people having talks. fun? Yeah, people shouldn't have fun. I got to do this. They're talking nonsense. Then we go over to the second tribe comes back. They're shocked Venus is still there. Soda goes and Venus immediately takes credit for all of this. Tevin's laughing about it. Tevin's happy about it. Ultimately, Tevin goes home. So we know Tevin is the loser in this situation. What is your take on Venus? And do you think that the way she is talking in this moment is good, bad, indifferent? Because the internet stands her. So I need Alexa's take on this. The internet stands her. But then the poor thing is like, I 
like I, I fall I'm following her tweets. Like I've that sucks, you know, like no matter how spicy of a personality she has, which I think she would admit that she does, like not I I I am disappointed in everyone's behavior. That being said, I am pro Venus that and for a few reasons. One, it's really nice to watch someone who is like mildly unaware of how they come off. Mm -hmm. And that like that is human. We are watching a whole ass human on TV and look at how we're treating them. So there's that's a larger problem. She uh, separately, she has knockout reads on people. She clocked Tevin so early and not just because he doesn't like her. She she clocked Charlie. She's got all these people and she doesn't have the personality to convince people, but she's right. She's completely right. So I like her. I or I I am enjoying her. I don't I don't not like her. Um I think the like I don't know what Hunter's problem is with her. That feels like something that we are not we're not really privy to. Yeah. There's well, something there because I read the mid his mid season interview and just the way he like kind of blew by her tonight. I was like, there's something we're missing here with the Venus and Soda. Like I felt that same way, but then when Soda got voted out and they the two of them just like fell in love, I was like, okay, that that sound, that's fine. But um, uh, you know, do you know what I'm saying? There's something I didn't, there's something I off didn't. camera there. I didn't read his interview. First of all, I want to say, Tom, when you cut this up tonight, make sure you just take Alexa's little take there on Venus. We'll throw it on Instagram reels. Don't worry. That's the only yes, place. Yes, do it. Do it. Um, but, <laughs> but we got to make sure we put that one over there. Here's here's my thing. And and JD says it here. She can't win, but she has me she's has she got Metavision. And JD talked about it in, um, in our podcast, in our predictions. He said she has a really good read on the game. She knows the move that needs to be made. But he compared her to some video game or TV. It was a last airbender character where he said she's a 10 in this. She's like perception. She's a nine in wisdom and she's a one in social skills or whatever the word uh -huh. is. Totally. And I think that's what's happening. And and look, I'm not going to read way too much into this, but here's the deal. When it comes to Hunter's mid-game interview, which I did not read. I do not know. So I'm just basing this off Alexa mentioned. I didn't even know Hunter did a mid-game interview. So that tells you who the true specialist was in this, <laughs> in this group. I studied. Um, I just know that the night of who who went home, it was the it was the uh, Mariah boot. She did go on quite a Twitter tear. Oh, yeah, and, I saw that. And she did call the men in her cast, and it seemed very directed at Hunter misogynistic and she mm -hmm. used the word misogynistic and i think that's like when you're a guy like hunter who is like the big buff burly i have a beard like i live in mississippi that's a word that's going to piss you off and so i could see now understand i don't know what they said on the island but maybe for this mid-game interview that's what he's doing and that's why he's being a little bit more aggressive again i didn't read this but on the island was that coming up? Was she calling him misogynistic to his face? Honestly, I don't think so. But also with how Venus has approached some people this season, I wouldn't be shocked if she literally looked Hunter in the eye and said, I think you're misogynistic, but we can work on that. And maybe that's fine. But I just think that this is, there is something that has been brewing on that NAMI tribe. And the one common denominator is, and look, you can be bullied, picked on, whatever. But the one common denominator is Venus has felt ostracized by everybody. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to get to the bottom of why exactly that is. And after what we saw with last week's boot and then her coming back and saying, this was my move, this is how I did it. I don't feel like I'm any closer to that. Because in my opinion, that's the type of person you'd want to pull under your wing and be like, you're so right, Venus. Come be the person who sits next to me at final three so I can explain to everybody why I think you're wrong mm -hmm. because I think you're wrong. But they're not doing that. Instead, I mean, Hunter and Tevin voted for Venus tonight. Yeah, I think this is like the truest definition of both situations are completely correct where – um I think, yeah, to, fin to finish the Hunter and Venus thing, they're they are two personalities that probably just do not mesh. Um, exactly. Um, 
I think there was also a secret scene I studied. There was a secret scene early on during the tribal phase where Venus goes to Tevin and she's like, hey, we are like going down a bad path. Can we talk about it? And he, from my perspective, was was not receptive uh, whatsoever. So I think it's a combination of this. She, they designed these tribes on purpose. They put her on a tribe that they knew she wouldn't gel with because she and Soda did slash didn't gel. She and Tevin never gelled. She and Hunter never gelled. Um, her and Randon didn't, and then they did because neither one of them had friends. <laughs> right. And then I don't know what her relationship is with Liz. Um, and I think that there is something psychological to like the Alicia, what, Alicia, Alice, why, why am I blacking out? The girl from Korong. Yeah, Alicia. Alicia, there, there's some psychological factor there of if there is a common denominator that people don't like, they will become the worst versions of themselves to that person. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, the way, like, when she and Tevin were talking tonight, of course she came off obnoxious, but I thought that he came off obnoxious by, like, cracking up and falling over himself on the, on the shelter. Both but both parties were obnoxious in that situation. So I'm defensive of Venus in the sense that like, I like it must suck to have everyone absolutely despise you for in your brain, no reason. Um, so I'm pro Twitter rant, go on it. Yeah. Here's but I get it, but I get why people yeah. don't like her also. And I think you're right with the obnoxious statement. I think the one difference is Tevin was laughing in his confessional to the camera. And I think what people- He was laughing at Liz. He, he and Liz, he was like- but he was, Okay, so I guess I guess what my point is going to be though. Yes, he was laughing at Liz too. That is true. He's not, he's putting on the stone cold face for Venus. Whereas I don't think Venus is putting on the stone cold face for the people that she is upset with. And I think that's why people are getting more pissed at Venus. And Tevin knows that he can say it to Liz. Tevin doing that to Liz is why he got voted out tonight. That is totally. the reason he went home. So it ended up biting him in the ass because he got overly arrogant. He got cocky. He went the wrong direction on this and thought he was closer with somebody than he truly was regarding this. However, mm -hmm. he at least, when Venus was telling him things, he's going, wow, you're right. That's so amazing. You're correct. He was doing that at least to her face where I don't know, I don't know what Venus is like when she's being kind of approached with things that she feels are totally outlandish because I think Venus and Q might be having similar reactions when they are put on the spot, which is I must immediately get defensive. I think Venus wears her heart on her sleeve for better or for worse. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. like that there are pros and cons to that, but she, I don't think she can lie the way that Tevin can, but anyways, I, I was like, I don't find this convincing because I know that he's like the the correct one here. But he like he played her great. He totally like he nailed it. And what was his downfall to your point is that he then made fun of her in front of Liz. Yeah, that was the biggest. So thing. all that to say is like I think both parties are completely true. But I am just like always going to be more like I don't want to say I'm on her side, but I'm like. I'm not going to be like, yeah, everyone keep trashing her. Like, yeah. give her a break, you yeah. know? Um, now, let me ask you this, because I don't know if you'll, I don't know if we'll see you again before the end. So to, to wrap up kind of our Venus conversation here, do you think that if she gets the final three, she's getting any votes? Or do you think that it's at least what we're seeing is truthful enough that if she sits a final three, she will be the zero vote finalist? Um, I think, well... They're all contractually obligated to go seven three zero, right? Seven one zero. So, seven one zero. Except for um, last year, it was five three zero. But yes, true. Perhaps yeah, true. Zero. I think if if she gets a vote, it would be from Soda, because or the two of them figured something out at the end. But and no. maybe maybe it would be something along the lines of whoever the third person sitting there is. Maybe Q is the third person sitting there, and he. Yeah. Hit someone off and somebody votes for her as a vote against Q. So Q finishes third place. Cause I'm going to be honest with you. Q's in for a world of hurt next week. Ugh, he is in for gosh, a world of hurt next week. So yeah, I don't know what's going to happen with, with. Portland. Yeah. I think if she, 
is that I don't think this is something that I think she's everyone's saying she would be in a, she'd be incredible on a second chance season. I completely agree with that. She, I don't think this could happen in time for final tribal. Cause I don't think she has like an ally who will tell her this, but if she can figure out how people actually perceive her and then she goes to final tribal and she's like, I rubbed people the wrong way. I figured it out. And I, I, the whole time I tried so hard to vote out the people I wanted and I just couldn't do it. She might get something, but yeah, I could, you, see know, you know, but or I don't, I don't envision. She's just stuck in that new era trap of Owen, no matter what you did, Jake, no matter what you did, Sucks. Romeo, no matter what you did, you were getting zero votes. We were doing anything to give Jake one vote. <laughs> Yeah, that's it. Um, here we go. Low six. Let's go, Alexa. Phil, hope you're excited for Caleb Williams to return the Lions to the rightful place at the bottom of the NFC North. <laughs> if you think Caleb Williams is the savior, man, I don't, I don't, I kind of feel bad taking the ten dollars there. That's all I'm gonna say. I'm a little nervous there. Send it um, back. Send it back. Yeah, send it back. Like the Bears are gonna be wishing they could do with Caleb Williams after year one. <laughs> um anyway. uh, Q's in Q's, Q's in trouble. Like now it's annoying because I was watching the tribal and I was like, get him out of here. Like, I don't like, now I'm just annoyed. Like Tevin made the good point. He's like, if he doesn't want to be here, fine. I'll be in the final nine. I completely agree with that. Um, so yeah, he's, he's in for a world of hurt. <laughs> he's in for a world of hurt. We had, and we haven't talked about it, We're 26 minutes in a massive game of hide and seek this week. Now, Alexa, <laughs> you and I, one of our biggest complaints as we started covering the new era, even when we were covering the late thirties, it was, there's no old school fun camp life type stuff. Was this hide and seek game, what you've been craving or was this hide and seek game really, really over the top and took too much time? Where's your take on this? It was really, really over the top and I loved it. So I thought it was, well, I was watching with someone who thinks the fact that there's one challenge in 90 episodes is absolutely ridiculous. And to an extent, I, during the tribal phase, I completely agree with that. Yes. Um, I, I liked it because it felt like a really good combo of like, this is humorous and silly and fun. And it is so over the top because the way that Q and Venus are deducing information from this is, is laughable. And so I found that hilarious. What did you think? I thought it was great. I loved it. And like, I'm going to be honest with you. They showed the HD camera shot of where Ben was laying. And I was like, where is he? <laughs> like, what are we talking about? Ben, ben is did awesome. a great job. Hunter did the great job of just climbing the closest spot. He's the kid who, when you're playing hide and seek and you're like, you know, in the Northeast, you go into a basement to play, but you're the person that has to count at the top. He's the person who literally hides right behind how the door opens. So when they open the door, like it blocks them behind and the person can never find him because they never look back up at the top of the stairs. Yeah. I love that. Did Q and Venus actually deduct anything from this? Deduce anything from this? I don't think so. I think that was yeah. a bit of a stretch, but. If anything, the only one that I agree with is that, like Hunter does everything at a hundred percent. That's the only one that I agree with. Um, but yeah, otherwise I was like, get out of here with these opinions, but it was hilarious. I loved it. Like keep, keep them going. No, but like, I, the, I, the, I, the, but like that he was going to base his votes off of this stuff. It's like that, that was frustrating. Was Ben a little shocking to you though? Do you think that this, do you think that this could be either a foreshadow of what happens with Ben or potentially like an issue with Ben uh, that ends up getting him voted out where people aren't looking at him as like a very serious player. And now all of a sudden yeah. he's playing the game of hide and seek and he's got himself covered in the green Sega shirt, which you're representing <laughs> Sega right now. He's I know. Yeah. Is. I mean, he was well hidden. I, I, I thought Ben was going to win for the entire pre-merge and now I don't really know. I can't get a read on him. I get if he does everyone win, likes it him. Sense. It would yeah. make sense why his edit is the way it is because I just feel knowing Ben, seeing Ben play the game, this is Ben's personality and it's a tough one to edit. It's a hard one. It doesn't follow your your stereotypical this happens, totally. then this happens, then this happens. He's not going to give those biting confessionals like Hunter that are going to be super dramatic every now and then or Tevin or Q. I mean, Q had 15 confessionals tonight. 15. Wow. Yeah. Liz That's has 14 confessionals this season. <laughs> yeah, he was 
This was the Q show tonight. That, what? yeah. I knew something crazy was happening at Tribal. That was not in any way what I thought it would be. And La Morena with a great point. Weren't they afraid of snakes lurking in their hiding places? Oh, my God. I would be worried, based on what Carla was saying, where they were digging the tree, I'd be worried about, about laying in somebody's poop from an old season. That's what I'd be scared of. Oh, God. Did you not read that from Carla? She said that when Jen no. had them digging under the tree, that was their pooping tree in season Oh, four. God, that's gross. <laughs> um, here's what Carla Two years off. Was. Another super like, Alexa, it's so great to see your beautiful face again. Do you think anyone is working with Q after this? If so, who? I think Hunter is still going to work with him. Because I think they need each other. And Hunter lost a huge ally in Tevin. Like, the two of them were super tight. And then I think for, like, Q is the one who told Hunter. And so that is, like, a, that's very trusting for Hunter. That's the only thing I can think of. I also think if you're Hunter, you want to keep Q around as long as possible. Because Q is always going to do things that are going to make people say, should we just vote Q? Same mm -hmm. with Venus. Because Hunter and Tevin, I was shocked that they voted Venus tonight because it never felt like Venus had any chance of going home. But Venus is always going to be coming out of people's mouths. Totally. Just like Q. And if I'm Hunter, I'm the biggest guy out there. I probably have the, the most uphill battle in terms of getting to Final Three. Not winning at Final Three, but getting to Final Three. I am trying to keep those kinds of crazies around as long as possible. If I'm looking at this cast, this is what's fun about, I think, season 46 right now. If I'm looking at this cast and I'm Hunter, there are so many shields for me mm -hmm. that I am so grateful I was put on this cast. Because during season 42, which we podcasted, Jonathan goes very deep and we were shocked the whole season of, do they not see how good he is at the game physically? But then we kind of learned in post-game press and everything like that that Jonathan wasn't going to necessarily get the votes if he sat at Final Three because socially he just wasn't there. But Hunter is. And so when I look at how this is breaking out, Venus is a big target. Hugh is a big target. Tiff has an idol. Now everybody knows how dangerous she is. So that's dangerous. Ben is a sneaky, fun – like he's sneaky in mm -hmm. a fun way. You don't realize how good he is. Charlie and Maria are hiding in plain sight. They're doing a great job yeah. of somehow lowering their threat level, even though they're playing hard. Kenzie, he was playing up how dangerous Kenzie is because she can win immunities and she's, and she's social. Liz, okay, that's one where you're not necessarily going to get much out of that. But if I'm Hunter, I'm sitting there saying, keep being weird, everybody. Just keep being weird. And Q totally. is playing the weirdest game out of anybody. JD had said way earlier in the chat, this is the third time he has fake quit. The third time he has fake quit. Oh, and wow. That's crazy. I thought it was the second. I thought it was Jay the second. I thought he only did it once. Well, he definitely did it the one time. Didn't he do it like – he did it at camp, but then he did he do it at Tribal too, where he talked about it or no? I remember he did it like before they lost when they voted out Banu mm -hmm. or some at one point when he was referenced. I don't know. But regardless, it's two or three too many. It's yeah, it's two or three too many. That's for sure. Oh my um, god. Okay, so we get to this challenge. First of all, I want to say this: Rainbow he says, "Oh, they're so weak; they can't hold up as long." The footholds are so much smaller in this. New they look small. They were in the old one. If you go look at the um, the one that Parvati and Ozzy won, those footholds are massive. Like you mm. can fit so much of your foot in there, so it makes it a little bit easier. These are much smaller. We had the rice situation. Alexa, you get to come back for the rice. Like, here we are. It was never this a rice situation. situation, gal, but I'm happy to talk about it. I'm happy I... to talk about it. First time in Survivor history, they didn't accept it. Alexa, were you surprised they didn't accept it? And did Q actually have a point in this moment saying, y'all weren't going to beat Hunter? Q had a great point. Totally with him on that one. Because Hunter previously climbed up a tree to win hide and seek. So this guy is going to crush this challenge, which he absolutely didn't. He totally deserves that immunity. Um, no, sorry, they're a group of competitive people. No, screw the rice. I think, I think I understand why Q is frustrated, especially when you get to like, they got like 2.5 people, but this is a group of people that is really competitive and no, clearly no one feels comfortable. I think it's hard when a group, where no one feels safe is going to give themselves up for the greater good. That's just not going to happen. There's no real alliances. So 
I'm not surprised. And I, I support everyone being competitive. Yeah. And so I completely, completely agree with you. Bless you. I completely you. agree with you. Um, this might be the wake up call Jeff needed for what the rice, how they actually value the rice. Mm -hmm. I am glad to see a cast as competitive as this mm -hmm. one where nobody is that. Are you trying to click something? I, I don't have access. I should have logged no, in on. this shadow, the cat. No, Jordan Stoms. Tempt them with something good. Yeah, there you go. The, the rice is kind of cringy. Tempt them with fun food, please. Jordan Stoms. Yes, that's a good point. And I think you're saying to them, then, okay, I have a couple things I need to say here because now it's all clicking back in my head. You say, we need four of you. There's no negotiation. But two of you can give up your votes and you can all still compete in the challenge and get the rice. Mm -hmm. So Jeff is trying to get people to give up their votes for rice. That's silly. That's not good producing. I'm sorry. That is a bad move because you don't want people losing their votes for food because as an audience, that pretty much means nothing. We're not eating the rice with them. So when people lose their votes for rice, we have no way of actually like understanding the power behind that. And it feels mm -hmm. silly to us. I think that's weak. But I love that this cast said, screw it. We're not going for it. We're going and playing. Maybe mm -hmm. this will set a precedent for future casts to say to Jeff, stop doing this. We don't need the rice thing anymore. We can move past this. Yeah. Because this is what now the sixth season in a row that they have done this exact same situation. Also, all right, great. They get the rice. What impact does that have on the viewer? It doesn't. No, so absolutely not none afterwards. We have no yeah. idea if they're well fed or not. Yep. Yep. And La Morena, totally right? they need to offer a steak dinner. Do Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Love that. Yeah. So Q totally really agree. wanted this. Liz was willing to step off because Liz obviously hasn't eaten anything. She had a feeling nobody else was. Charlie tried to finagle two other people to do it, even though he's kind of hinting that he would potentially do it. Nobody else really even thought about it. And I love that. And you know what? Q's right. You're probably not going to beat Hunter at this. Venus, I think, had a very good point because everybody was correcting me. Danielle did win it. But Parvati's the one who's standing up there pretty much dangling, like sticking her leg out. That's what I'm thinking of. But mm -hmm. if you're the smallest woman out there, you have a very good chance of winning this challenge just because mm -hmm. you're holding up less weight, especially if you have a high pain tolerance. That's great. But Liz knew she wasn't winning this. Uh, Q knew he wasn't winning this. Tevin should have known he wasn't winning this. And Ben should have known he wasn't winning this. What I found absolutely infuriating my most infuriating moment of this episode q quitting less than 20 seconds into this challenge and this is again where i'm saying it's like he's throwing a temper tantrum when he doesn't have 100 control of the situation rather than go up there and compete he says screw this i'm not going to beat hunter so i'm not even going to try that's the perfect person you want on your team Somebody who says, well, we can't beat them, so I'm not even going to try. I'm just going to quit right now, and I'm going to go sit on the bench. That's a great teammate, friends. I don't understand that. And then he's going to go and say, oh, I threw it. I threw it. Yeah, we know you threw it. But you know what, Q? You did quit this challenge. Mm -hmm. And maybe you couldn't win it, but put a little effort in. It's not going to kill you. That's all I have to say about that. It felt like such a baby moment, and everybody can get on Venus as much as they want. Look. I actually quite – I think Q and Venus are probably the two best casting choices on this season. Got to love to hate them sometimes. And I love to hate Venus at times, and I love to hate Q at times. And for as mm -hmm. right and as, how much I defended Q when he was talking about Charlie, he was talking about, you know, uh, Charlie, you shouldn't have said anything to Venus. We had a right where we wanted her. I'm fine with that. But you can't be like, oh, I didn't get my way, so I'm taking my ball and I'm going home. And then every time somebody falls off in under a minute – pout and throw your arms up and, and hit your legs. Oh, we could have had the damn rice. You'll get plenty of rice, Q. I've seen you recently. You ate plenty of rice. You're good. It's fine. <laughs> You're not, it's not a big deal. That just infuriated me. It felt like such a such a sour puss move. Yeah. I I, I can't claim this opinion as mine because I saw it on, to, on Twitter while you were going through that. The a huge conversation topic, I presume, of the premiere was – quitting the sweat or savvy. And I know I had this opinion sitting on the couch and I'm sure you guys talked about this too. I was like, there's no freaking way that Q is the one who suggested you quit. Like Jelinski, 
get out of here. Uh -huh. Now there's a pattern. Uh -huh. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to sit here and say robbed G Otis of the season. Jelinski. He's the I am the obsessed with the fact that the season is like still happening and they are like memeing this guy like to each other. Like whenever the word seven comes up, like tonight in the episode, it was just so funny that they always that they keep doing that. And I love that Jeff's in on it too. This is I Jeff love it. having fun. I do think Jeff's having more fun with season 46 than he had in a while. Sarah, spot on as always, Phil. I agree with you. Thank you. You so love much. that one. I'm sure you do. <laughs> um, I just, yeah, look, and like again, do I personally hate Q? No, obviously. No, he's not. great. But I have I have to throw shade when shade needs to be thrown. And and Q's yes, another he's one. He's awesome. I would like love to hang out with him. Q throws a lot of shade on Twitter, just like Venus does, just like pretty much everybody other than Ben, who's just trying to get brand deals with Taco Bell and Metallica does. Unreal. I am all for it. Like, do what you got to do. But don't sit here and tell me, like, you're, like, the biggest, strongest, buffest dude in the world when you quit 20 seconds in because I'm not going to beat Hunter. If you put your mind to it and a little maybe. heart cue, I bet maybe. you Maybe. Yeah. I mean, probably not because Hunter's great, but you could get close, you yeah. know? This cast, um, you had I don't, I don't know if they're like allowed to say more than they used to, but this cast is like coming in hot, and I really like that. I don't think that there's much of an allowed in this situation. I think it's more <laughs> of a here's my middle finger, stare at it. We don't <laughs> well, care. I am here for that. I we'll think they look, season, yeah. We'll see if season 47 is even allowed to have social media or show their faces in public during the airing of the season. Yeah, regardless. Um, no, I appreciate, they all seem really petty and I really um, respect that. <laughs> Anderson Frazier, Sarah is Phil's burner account. Yeah, I've given <laughs> myself true. seven tax dollars thus far. Um, seven my tax wife's dollars. My going to be when that comes back is like 624 or whatever the hell it is. So yes. Oh my God. We, um... I'm curious now because we've talked a lot about the episode and obviously, you know, all the chaos that happened beforehand. And we'll dive into that a little bit more. And Alexa, if you're going to be here, I'm getting you for the hour. You tell Katie. She oh, you got me. Up, you're not getting her yet. Oh, but yeah. We're good. Situation here. What have you thought of this season <clears throat> as a whole? I want to know this because I want to know how you've been feeling with the Banu stuff at the beginning, Randon getting medevaced, then going into the next portion of the game. Um, what happened with Mariah last week's split vote? Somebody had said, give us your bullet points quickly. <laughs> what were you thinking coming into this episode? And how did your view change of people, season, anything in this episode? Um, I did not enjoy the pre-merge really much at all. I was watching the episodes a little late, like days later, which probably was like, I finally get my Wednesdays to myself. So there was a little bit, a little bit of that there. But what does that mean? Is Excuse yourself me? better than hanging out with Phil? Is that what you're trying to say? Uh, I'd like to skip the question. Um, right. No, but the, there, you know, there was something wrong about watching Survivor and then only blabbing my opinion to one person. That took some getting used to. But anyways. Um, <laughs> we the, have 214 watching the, live right now. Alexa. I know. I, I, sh I know. I can still log in, but out of respect, I haven't been. And I was like, oh, I can't see how many people are watching. So, and I can't. You can't do much on this side of things. Anyways, uh -huh. so I um, was at Bryce and Wendell's premiere party and had a blast. And all I heard, I I barely watched. Oh, hey, Andy. Yeah, great. Andy was like the first person I saw uh, on my first Wednesday of Freedom. Um, so I had to rewatch that episode. Jelinski, like, that's not like my kind of player, but now I'm here for the meme. And so loved that. The Bonnie thing was not for me. I had trouble with that. I that resulted in a lot of my delayed watching. I just a, like could, I couldn't. I, I didn't enjoy watching that. Mm -hmm. That's so. You're saying that with the whole Bonnie situation, that was when you were saying, "I'm so happy I'm not podcasting right now." Absolutely. Okay. Now. Yeah. But then Banu goes home, and all of a sudden, as Mike, uh, no, it was Peridium said, the season is no longer constipated. <laughs> how, how are that you? That man, doing? he's got such a way with words. Such a way with words. How have you been feeling since the constipation of Banu ended? And we had Jem go home with an idol, Mariah uh, go home with the crazy 13, Tim and Soda last week, 
and then we'll get into you know how this might have changed your view. What were you thinking there? The gem, I loved gem. She was a great like I don't know what the right analogy is, but she was a gem. I was a huge fan. She played hard and she flamed out. Like what what more could you ask? She was great, great sport about it. Absolutely loved it. The Mariah boot, I'm going to be honest, I thought that was like the biggest waste of time. I don't know why they got rid of her. Um, especially because, like the psychology of like mm, green versus orange is like so weird to me because no one actually is with that. Um, again, Venus having a correct read. None of these people actually like each other. Um, I hate the split vote, but that like got me into this season. Like this, like the soda vote I thought was really good. Um, Tim, I thought was funny. I didn't like have much of an opinion on him until he referred to himself as um, an attractive dad. father. Yeah. So like no, he was the sexiest dad to ever play. That's what it was. I mean, we love. So it took, it took me a really long time to get into the season. Maybe that had to do with the fact that I like wasn't being held accountable for watching it, but I, I it was a slow burn for sure. Now I am all in. I love Kenzie and Tiffany's relationship, especially as it relates to Q, because they foreshadowed this two week, like last week, two weeks ago. And we've sort of been seeing this coming for a while. Um, I think Ben is a really fun breath of fresh air. I think Maria and Charlie are a really cool duo that no one's talking about. Like there's interesting dynamics now. And even like Hunter, Tevin and Venus all kind of not liking each other. That has been really interesting to me. And I've been really enjoying Hunter. And now it's going to, it's going to be interesting to see how he copes with losing his number one. That's really hard. Yeah. I mean, that was, I mean, they almost had him crying when he said we bonded over Andy Griffith. I mean, I was ready to start <laughs> sobbing because Poor of guy. that situation. Hunter also, Hunter was me when he was like, this is the dumbest thing ever. I yeah. was like, this is the dumbest thing. I'm like, you're so right. Can we confirm that Ben and Hunter are in the final three? Cause they were both the ones who said this was the dumbest tribal ever. <laughs> are they confirmed final three because they're the yes. only ones who acknowledge that? They just skip all the other tribal councils. What have you been thinking of? What do you guys think of the season? Um, it. What, what do you mean? You've been like, listening every week. What are you talking about? I know, but you know I have every like thought, I, every thought. I have I do tune in. Friend. I do tune in randomly. Like I will um like I'll watch the episode and then I'll be like getting ready for bed. And I'm like, oh, let me like brush my teeth and listen to what they're saying. And you two are yelling at each other a lot and it stresses me out and then I turn it off. I will say, and I doubt Will will make it this far, even if he does listen. It's been so <laughs> nice to to do this with you again and not have to get into a yelling match every five minutes and be but told that's no fun. Yeah. Um, sometimes it can be fun. What's, well, I, what has been your biggest fight? Um, I don't know, honestly, because yeah, you guys just yell. We just yell. It's kind of like one of those things like um, like an old married couple. They just yell at each other to yell because they're kind of bored. Um, yeah, it's like the in Curb Your Enthusiasm, him and the girl. What a, yeah, I so think helpful. he said that, that Banu was his favorite player of all time. I think that was something that he said. But, you know, mm. I'm sure that if he gets this far in the podcast, I won't get a text that says anything about that. Um, <laughs> but the Banu stuff was a struggle. I talked yeah. very much about how, especially when he was, like, down on his knees begging and stuff. I didn't like that. Since then, I've dug it. I mean, I love the Jim yeah. episode. I love the Mariah episode. Might have something to do with the fact that I was at the Ron Clark Academy. So that was just a fun freaking environment to be yeah, in. Yeah, that, that seemed cool. I hate the double split like you do, but to have Soda and um, Tim both go in kind of weird ways and everything, I like that. And then this vote was crazy. A lot of times we'll talk about these types of episodes aren't actually that good. Like, because we, yeah. had, we had Julia go home in Edge of Extinction crazy tribal i remember i was actually at a watch party for that one too and it was like 35 minute tribal and then julia went home who we had never seen anything from the entire season and you were left going i don't get it like i i think if you go back and listen to our podcast for that episode we were screaming about this is stupid that we don't like yeah. it. boring not fun tv but tonight's was fun because you really did get to see the frustration and confusion from the players and when they were going up to vote and they all were just so disgusted with whatever Q had just done. All for Tevin to just go home anyway. That's great TV. And yeah. Q, it, it didn't make any sense to me. He's tweeting right now. Everybody's confused in all caps or something like that. <laughs> I'm sure there was a rhyme or a reason in your brain at the time. I do not buy your Monday morning quarterbacking. 
But no. it's great TV, and I appreciate that from you. So thank you. Yeah, I think um, it's almost like he violated a. It's like he broke a rule, but he violated this like unwritten rule of. It's it's it, it would have like almost been better if he quit, you know, like you Nicholas can't says, do you think it was a strategy. Do you? I think he'll tell us it was a strategy, but I don't know. I don't think I, I don't think we'll ever know because if you, even if like you talk to him at the end of the season, like, you know, hindsight's 2020, 20, but I don't know. I it's, it's like, if he quit, then it's like, okay, that happened, but you don't get to blow up everyone's game because you like, I can't even say because, cause we don't even know what his thought was like that. That was what was frustrating. It's like, he didn't pick a lane on it. Yeah. I agree with you on that. It seemed like he really was trying to quit. And if he wasn't, I don't understand what the purpose of this was because the chaos ended up getting Tevin voted out. Anyway, he mm. wanted it to be Tiffany. He didn't think he had the votes for Tiffany. How was this ever going to spin it on to Tiffany? It no. wasn't. It was going to spin it on to you. So, yeah, it, it didn't make sense to me what was going on. Aiden Rusicki says, Q's reasoning is once he heard Tevin say, if Q wants to go, he can go. He gave him per self permission to vote for Tevin. I guess that was his way of coming out of the six. I have no idea. The six has come and gone. It's gone. I have no idea. What did you think? So we haven't talked about the pre-tribal phase, which I think is important. We pretty much covered everything else. But in the pre-tribal phase, we did get a couple names thrown out. It was Kevin. Then it was let's vote out Tiffany. We see Venus getting happy for the first time maybe in the history of the season. Being like, yeah, they're actually thinking it's not going to be me. This is awesome. And then Hunter's like, let's vote Venus out. And then, yeah, he's like, why can't we just vote her? So we get the whole situation of it's going to be Tevin. Or no, I'm sorry. It's going to be Tiffany. Then it's found out that actually it's going to be Tevin. Liz comes up with the plan. It is 100% Liz's idea. She's the one who says it. She starts going around and bringing it up to everybody. Q catches wind. Q decides to go over and talk to Hunter about it, kind of to save face. Hunter then in turn, while talking to Q, just runs over and immediately starts talking to everybody. Mm -hmm. Who says this was a huge mistake on his part, meaning Q, because he's like, well, now I have screwed myself. I put my foot in my mouth. I should have just kept my damn mouth shut. What was going on here and what was the best move for everybody in this situation? Do you think Q made the right move going and telling Hunter? Do you think Hunter made the right move going and talking to everybody else? What is your mind thinking? And, and was it the right move to land on Tevin? I think it was the right move to land on Tevin, but be, as we mentioned at the beginning, it's probably the better move to get rid of Tiff because mm -hmm. Tiff is like, she had, she would have had no clues coming, but, but neither did Tevin. So I guess that's the thing. You had two threats who had, who thought they had no chance of going home. So it's kind of a win-win. Um, and Q gets a pissed off ally. If he blindsides Tiff, he's never getting Kenzie's trust back. If he, if he, if Hunt, so let's, let's go through this. If he decides to not tell Hunter, but Hunter finds out that Q helped get rid of Tevin, then Hunter and Q are never getting back together. So I, I don't know if he was thinking that far ahead. He probably was. And if I, I, I totally like understand why Hunter would want to go blow it up. That's his number one right there. So mm -hmm. I don't think it came about like, I don't think it was presented in the best way because you put a circle of people together, hundred feet from a different circle of people. What do you expect them to do? Like, so that felt like a bad idea. Um, but it sounded like there were, you know, like very, there was very little time before they had to go to tribal council. Um, so I think everyone did like what everyone did made sense, but I think it's hard because there's no, like, there's no one who's grounded. Like, I think, I think Kenzie and Tiff are the most grounded, but they're like half in the six, half out of the six, you know? Yeah. And before I give my I answer, if you, if you think you would play it better than Q, Adam Klein does casting. Alexa, you know we have sponsors now with Adam Klein and Idol Plays? Well, no, we do. Adam Klein is not we have a partnerships. 
Adam Klein with his casting coaching. So if you want to check that out, we have the link in the description. If you think that you would go out there and make more sense than Q, maybe hit up Adam Klein and he can help you with your video. Uh, Unreal. And help you find the true essence of who you are. Idle plays. If you think you'd be better at the puzzles than anybody else, click the link below. We got the we got the Fitz Tower, the wheel go round, which I beat Alexa in. Don't forget that Alexa. Oh, you were in maybe I'll have to buy one. Yeah, and then also the tree puzzle, which took me about seven hours to put together. I was going to make a TikTok video of it, and then I was like, holy shit, nobody has this much time. Back to the episode. <laughs> wow, um, nice yeah, job. Good, right? People nice say job. that they don't like when the ads feel forced and everything like that. So good. No, those are good. Thank you. Thank you. Um, anyway, back <laughs> to this. I don't know what I would have done in this situation if I was Q. Because Q definitely wants to have the power. And I think if I ever played Survivor, I wouldn't want to have as much power as Q. I don't think it's worth no. it. I don't think it's necessary. I don't think it's important. But I understand why he wants to be making the moves. And if I feel like Hunter and Tevin are my best way to move forward in this game, then I might go over there and say it. But the problem is then you are leaving out your two biggest allies to dry, which are Kenzie and Tiff. And like you said, he's never getting Kenzie's trust back. And he's got to just hope tip forgives him over the next nine days to then give her, him the million dollar vote but he had to know hunter was going to run over immediately and blow this this shit up there was no way hunter wasn't going to do that he's not going to sit there and say well because i think q is actually in the midst of writing a book called the q rules so get ready for that everybody he wasn't just going to sit there and say okay q you're right you've said this i agree with you done i'm just going to let my my closest ally get voted out that's not going to happen yeah. So I don't know what he was thinking Hunter would do, but in my opinion, Hunter made the absolute right move. Somebody in here had said he should have played his idol here. Tom, Tom, um, was this it? Oh, he said, Tom, Tom, the man 94. I thought it made sense at first because I thought Hunter was going to play the idol for Tevin. And I think he had said, he had also said something along the lines of Hunter should have played the idol for Tevin. I think if you're Hunter, there's no reason to do that because you can run your way through this game by winning the challenges. He just won a challenge that is generally won by like smaller guys or smaller women. And now he goes and wins it as the buffest guy on this season. Mm -hmm. He could win a bunch of challenges to win this game. So keep that idle as long as you can, because with how people lose votes, with how they're split votes, you never know when you're going to need that. Hold on to it as long as you can. But yeah, of course you have to go and try to fight to keep Tevin in the game. You have to do everything you possibly can to make that happen. And I don't know why Q didn't see that coming. Yeah, I don't think he. I don't think he cared. Like he's out of one of his fifteen confessionals is uh, people need to play the Q game. Like that is just not gonna ha like. He's like saying he's so close that he's saying something so unreasonable. And like, yeah, he's, well, he compared himself to Boston Rob. He's actually playing a very Boston Robbie-esque game. Yes. It's just people don't play that way anymore. You yeah. know? Yeah. People aren't receptive to that anymore. No. And that's something, I don't know. I don't know if Q is going to learn that on this season. If Q is going to go out in some blind side, if Q is going to somehow make the final three. But the one thing I will say is I don't see any way that Q wins this game. And I don't think no, he realizes no that you can't play the Boston Rob game anymore unless like, and win and Boston Rob couldn't even play the Boston Rob game and win like redemption. No. Island is the least Boston Rob game. Boston Rob played. Yeah. Um, I really have, I'm so curious how next week's going to go, like how he's going to navigate this. Yeah. Because and how the others are going to navigate this. Cause now like other than Charlie and Maria and Kenzie and Tiff, no one has an ally, like a real yeah. ally. Yep. That's crazy. There's nine people left. I know. And I feel like Ben probably goes right back in with Maria and Charlie. And But now I don't see Ben winning. I feel like he's just been too quiet during the chaotic parts of this season. Yeah. Which, like, should be a compliment. But, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Um, Alexa, this was a question for me, but I'll ask you, too. <laughs> Would you wear a Q shirt? I think I am wearing a Q skirt right now, except I'm wearing it the way that um, the manu manufacturer told me to wear it. Yeah. But I'm very pro Q skirt. I love that little shark tank fit. On? I think they would. Everyone loves a loincloth. <laughs> and that was the funny part when he started talking about like guys can wear it and they don't have to wear anything under it. And then Tevin just started dying laughing because you can just <laughs> imagine like, well, lift the hood. I mean, my <laughs> goodness. Um, so, I love yeah. that. He's like, no one should feed me. I have crazy ideas. 
I have crazy ideas. Yeah, I was I see like that's where I feel like Q is probably getting along pretty well with the cast on the island because I think he is a funny guy. He's got a great personality. Like he seems like a blast. He's but just, I would not play a competitive game partner yeah, with him. He's really aggressive with it. Yeah. Um, he now has 53 confessionals this season. Kenzie's over wow. 40, Tiffany's over 40, and Charlie is over 40. So for anybody who's playing the the mm. uh what is it, prop bet game, those all hit. And we had nine butts get off of seats today. So Alexa, the the game that we decided to play instead of bootless, since everybody cheats at the bootlist, was the um was the over under game, which Will came up with. And the way that the over under game works is simply just over under. And so I had made over under 15 and a half butts off seats at tribal council before Jeff says it's time to vote. And Will and Peridium were just like, Phil, that is a stupid number. That's really bad. Well, we are now up to 10, maybe 11 with five episodes left. So I'm feeling like this could still happen if we get one more of these. I love that. That's such a good idea. Yeah. So I'm feeling pretty good that that might happen. I got my fingers and toes crossed. We'll see what ends up happening. But um, yeah, that's where I stand on this one. Um, the reaction, somebody just posted a picture of the reactions of Tevin and Kenzie and Venus and Liz as Q is asking for the tribe to vote him out. It's just so funny. <laughs> I have to find that. Yeah. Um, crazy. All right, did I have we is there anything we haven't covered yet? Anything you want to say either about this episode, this season, anything oh that we God. haven't heard from you? Who are your guys' winner picks? Or what who were they at the beginning? Uh at the beginning I went Tiff. I've nice. been kind of I've been kind of latching on to Maria throughout the season, but now Maria has been pretty quiet too. She has 17 confessionals through eight episodes. It's kind of a little quiet in my book. I I'm I'm feeling like Tiffany and Kenzie are really obvious, but they've also just been the focal point of pretty much every single episode mm -hmm. because they kept losing Venus. I don't see getting the votes. And especially if she was a millionaire, I don't think she'd be taking the chances on Twitter that she's currently taking because that money could easily be taken away from her for breaking an NDA. So I don't think that she would be so loosey goosey if she had a million dollars. That's just my opinion. So it could it possibly be Charlie. Is I think Charlie it's potentially the winner of this season. Hunter's doing all right too. Ben, I guess, has an outside shot. Like I said, I don't know how they would really edit him if he was going to win. I don't think it would be all that much different than if he lost. I might want to get on the Liz train too, too, but I don't know. <laughs> so maybe it's Charlie, and maybe we're all just in denial that Charlie's actually going to be the winner of this season. I wow, it's so cool to not be a part of this. I feel like Charlie is obvious. I am like because really? of how Charlie. Charlie's like way about him because of the way he talks to people and the way he downplays himself. I, or Kenzie, I really want Kenzie to win. I love her. Um, and Kenzie kind of had the opposite where in the pre-merge, I was like, oh my God, she'll never win because people are going to meet her and see how, and like know how big of a threat she is because Bonnie was like talking about her, but she's done a very good job of lowering her threat level back down. And yeah. to your point, like, instead of flipping out, she was like, ooh, spicy. Like, that's that's a way of, like, being very aware, but not making yourself the focal point of anything. Yeah, and it would not be shocking at all if Kenzie pulled this out. It's just so hard for me when a tribe gets decimated as early as this tribe got decimated. It's hard mm -hmm. for me to take too much too seriously about Kenzie and Q and Tiffany because they are just such focal points by necessity it's a small mm -hmm. tribe and they keep losing so what else are you going to do they literally lost the first four immunity challenges so what else could you do mm -hmm. so i do agree with you though it seems like kenzie has lowered her threat level a lot and i would be i would be totally fine if kenzie won this game i think kenzie i think kenzie hunter and charlie are probably my favorites at this point the next level would be maria ben and probably um q no not q i'm kidding uh maria ben and i don't think there is one and then i think venus liz q those are your losers did i say tiff i don't think i said tiff so anyway i don't think you mentioned tiff no. i didn't mention tiff would be in that next level so it'd be kenzie sorry now i have the name in front of me kenzie hunter and charlie i think are the front runners mm -hmm. then i'd say tiffany ben and maria are in the next bunch and then i don't see liz venus or q winning this 
Um, mm -hmm. I just don't see that happening. I'm actually surprised that, I'm not surprised, but because I think this shows a lot of discipline from Hunter. I was expecting Hunter to play his idol on Tevin and save him. I'm but so happy he didn't. It was I'm so happy he didn't because him. it is so nice to have an idol that is actually private. So good on you, Hunter. Yeah, it is so huge. And for a player like him, it's so necessary because it, he's just he's an obvious target pretty much every every time he steps out there. So yeah, yeah totally. Um, okay, I will update the prop bet stuff and everything for everybody later. I'll announce it uh tomorrow on my after show, which I do for our twenty dollar patrons, and then we actually have a big day tomorrow. Blake and I are going to be live at 6.30 p.m. Eastern time with Brandon Donlin doing our Digging Deeper show. Uh, Digging Deeper has been quite fun. It seems like last week was the one everybody enjoyed the most, so that's nice. fun. Um, so we'll be doing that tomorrow at 6.30 p.m. McKenna and I will be recapping The Amazing Race tomorrow at noon. So two episodes coming out tomorrow. There should be another Survivor Connections coming out tomorrow, I believe. I guess we will find out how that ends up going. And then on Friday, John and McKenna will be doing Survivor Rewind. So that comes out that day. And then Sunday, trying to lock down a time still. But it, we're going to be live with Caleb uh, doing nice. our predictions and power rankings. So Caleb from last season will be joining us. And that will be a good time. Very excited to have Caleb on. So a very busy week. If you want to become a patron, patreon.com slash the specialist. Uh, follow us on social media, Instagram, TikTok. Those are the two ones that we're posting on the most, although I just live tweet the episode and get like my six or seven likes and feel good about myself. <laughs> That's it. That's all I got. Alexa, glad oh you're my able God. to in. How did it feel to be back? Was it good? It, was it bad? How did it feel? It feels great to be back. I it's, it's awesome to be the pretty girl that gets the text. It's like, hey, come back on. So would love to come back on. You guys are doing great without me, but happy to be here. And man, we couldn't have planned this better because that episode was unhinged yeah will you you done messed up you yeah really i hope he enjoyed whatever he was doing great to see I, you all i hope he did too uh like the video subscribe to the channel and i'll see you all tomorrow bye